Hey guys, and welcome to a brand new video here on FPL Now, your number one source for tips, tricks, and everything you need to know for Fantasy Premier League football. Today, we're going to be going over some new wildcard drafts for Game Week 10. So if you're excited for the video, as always, make sure to drop a like down below. Let's try and hit 30 likes today. Leave a comment. Who have you got your eyes on this week? Subscribe if you're brand new. Let's get into the video. So as always, with these wildcard draft videos, we go over three different drafts. One concentrating on like the back line, one concentrating on like the midfield line, and then the other one concentrating on the forward line. So this is the first one that we're going to be taking a look at today. Um, it has Foster and Sanchez in net. Now, personally, I prefer Raya in goal, but I guess after the Liverpool game, he's got some pretty nice fixtures coming up. Newcastle, Villa, Leeds, West Ham, Southampton, Tottenham, Wolves. Um, you just have to get past the Liverpool game. I own Sanchez. I was very surprised to see him get four points against City, especially with them winning 4-1. Um, but he made like eight saves that game uh, and got two bonus points. So that was very, very nice. But yeah, I think once he gets past the Liverpool game, I think Sanchez is a really good option. Plus, I mean, you can just play Foster this week anyway against Southampton at home. Like, are Southampton going to score against Watford maybe maybe not but then after that game you can just play Sanchez for Newcastle so yeah I mean I don't think there's anything wrong with going with Foster and Sanchez in goal because yeah they just kind of alternate really really nicely coming up at the back line we have Johnson, Rudiger, Chilwell, Alexander-Arnold and Livramento I understand a lot of people bench Livramento during the week, but I guess that's okay if he captain Salah. Um, but he did score nine uh, points, which was great. He scored a goal. He's a really, really cheap option, and he's got some nice fixtures coming up. Watford, Villa, and then Norwich. Great fixtures for this guy. And like I say, he's he's very, very cheap coming in at four point. I think he's 4.4 now, actually. Uh, we've got Trent as well, who's 7.6. I mean, I was not going to bring Trent in until like game week 15, but I feel like he's probably going to be my transfer this week, just simply because you, Liverpool just look ridiculous at the moment and against Brighton as well like I can't really see Brighton scoring against uh, Liverpool and especially with it being at um the Liverpool Stadium as well. We have Chilwell and Rudiger at the back. Um, so, Ru I mean, Rudiger's stapled. That's fair enough. We don't really need to worry about that. Chilwell, I mean, he's scoring every single game. So that's why a lot of people are bringing him in. Is he going to play instead of Alonso? I can't really see him losing his place. I think Alonso will play in the cup this week and then Chilwell will just be rested and then play at the weekend where they take on Newcastle and then Burnley. So I completely understand why a lot of people are bringing Chilwell in. He's a really, really good option. Uh, and yeah, I'm jealous that I don't have him. Finish things off at the back line though we have Johnson um, who actually is getting game time now he's 3.9 mil he's played the last two games where they beat Everton and they beat Tottenham he's coming on with seven and six points now I'm not sure if there's been an injury to the back line at West Ham but Dawson seems to not be playing anymore and Johnson is getting game time and I mean with West Ham's fixtures they're not great coming up but I mean if you have a 3.9 mil defender that is probably going to play why wouldn't you put him on your team so yeah I definitely think if you're on your wild card this week Johnson is definitely player uh, you should be taking a look at coming in midfield we have Foden Mount Salah Sun and Smith Rowe so a really really nice midfield there um, lots of talent lots of points now Foden is just ticking over every single week um, he's just I mean 18 points 6 points 7 points like he's not really losing his place as well he played like 60 minutes in the Champions League in the in the middle of the week and then played the full 90, um, I do believe, against um, against Brighton. So, yeah, he doesn't seem to be losing his place. In fact, De Bruyne got benched, which I was very, very um, just shocked about, really. But, yeah, if Foden keeps his place, which I think he will, he seems to be playing in that false nine position, then he's just a really, really good option to bring in. And if you don't own him and he doesn't play midweek in, like, the cup or anything, then, yeah, you should think about bringing him in because he's a really, really good option. Mount is a little bit knee-jerky, um, but with still Lukaku and Werner being injured... Havertz is obviously playing as that number nine role, but then it's just giving freedom to Callum Hudson-Odoi and Mount just to run down those wings and then just create chances and score goals, which is exactly what happened. Hudson-Odoi and Mount, of course, scored um, a, a few goals between them um, during the thrashing um, against Norwich. The only problem with uh, having Havertz at the moment is that he was the only one that didn't return against Norwich, which is crazy. All the defenders, all the midfielders, all the attackers, they all returned. They got some sort of, whether it had been a clean sheet or a goal or assist they all got something apart from hammers which is absolutely mad when you think about it but i think mount is a cheaper option um and whether Havertz is going to keep his place i mean he will until like lukaku and werner are back so i was always just going to keep Havertz until like uh, a couple more game weeks and i was going to bring sun in for him but um yeah you can obviously have sun in right now because 
He's only got Man United at home and then Everton. I mean, United just got thrashed 5-0 by Liverpool. I mean, they just, they don't look good at the moment. I mean, especially if Oli goes as well. I mean, that'll probably be a blessing for them. But yeah, I mean, I I, I reckon that's a decent fixture at the moment. Uh, Everton obviously just got pummeled 5-2 by Watford. I don't think these fixtures are that bad for Sun. Um, and then they obviously have Leeds, Burnley, Brentford and Norwich, Brighton and Leicester. So some really nice fixtures coming up for Sun. Uh, Smith Rowe, he's in there just because he's a cheap option. He's got Leicester, Watford, Liverpool, Newcastle coming up. Um, he seems to be the number 10 at Arsenal. He's just a really, really good option at the moment. So yeah, it, with the extra funds, I just kind of put him into the team as well. Uh, coming up front, we have Jesus, Tony, and Huang. Jesus seems to be another player that is nailed this season. He's getting a lot more minutes. He got 86 minutes against Brighton at the weekend, uh, got the assist. Didn't play the game week before that because obviously Brazil players weren't allowed to play. Uh, but then obviously played against Liverpool, uh, played 90 against Chelsea, 66 against Southampton, 85 against Leicester, 69. He's playing every single game. Um, and he's just a decent little option at the moment. Um, so yeah, if you don't have Jesus and you do want some sort of Man City attacker, I think he's a good option. Uh, Tony is a really, really good option coming up. Um, he has Burnley, Norwich, Newcastle. So yeah, he's on penalties. He's only 6.5 mil. Uh, I know there's been a lot of problems like injuries this week, like Vardy went off, uh, and Buemo went off. Uh, Rafinha went off so I understand that if you're not on your wild card you're in a bit of a predicament right now myself included I also had Tierney go off as well I've got like three triangles so I'm really hoping the press conferences make my life a little bit easier uh, and then we have Huang who again scored I mean Wolves were not very good at all um, but this guy got the goal and that's all that matters if you own him another eight points there he seems to be starting every single game uh, but that is the first wild card draft I do quite like this draft to be fair um, yeah, I don't really think there's too much wrong with it. Uh, you don't really have any money in the bank. You have 0 0.4 if you do go with this draft. But, I mean, at the end of the day, you, you don't really need to change anything with these players for a while, in my opinion. Coming up with the second draft, uh, this is where all of the money goes into the... I don't actually know. This is a pretty similar draft. Oh, but Havers is in this draft. Okay. So yeah, in net, we have Foster and Raya. Uh, Raya, as I've just spoken about with Brentford fixtures, are really good. Burnley, Norwich, Newcastle. Like, you'd like to think cle three clean sheets are coming there for Raya, especially with how good Brentford are at the back. Already spoke about Foster. Already spoke about Johnson. I've spoken about Trent, Chilwell. Cancelo is a player that a lot of people are getting rid of, really. Um, he obviously didn't get any points against Liverpool when they drew to all. He got six against Burnley, but then he got only one point against Brighton because he got a yellow card and they conceded that penalty so a lot of people aren't really too fussed with Cancelo at the moment but I mean he's got Crystal Palace at home next like he's going to be getting a clean sheet there uh United I think City are going to destroy United like I think they're going to absolutely get dominated in that game then Everton then West Ham then Villa I would definitely want Cancelo for these fixtures Watford Wolves Leeds Newcastle I mean I'd want Foden for those fixtures as well so really really nice uh being over Livermento Havertz, I mean, it's really up to you if you bring him in or not. I've got him in on my team. I took the punt. Uh, I captained him and everything. It's not been a good game week for me at all. Um, I think I finished on like 70 points. So yeah, I'm, I'm down to like 900,000th in the world. This is like the biggest red hour I think I've ever gotten in my life. Um, but yeah, one captain is, is all it made. I mean, I've made the right choice. I'd like to think 7-0 against Norwich. The fact that my player didn't return in any of those is just mind-blowing. And then Salah away at Old Trafford, you wouldn't expect him to get three goals and an assist. But that's FPL, man. These things happen. So, yeah, I mean, Habits are still on the team unless we get information on Lukaku and Werner. Like I say, this is my pre-kind of talk uh, wildcard drafts. Like, we usually do an updated wildcard draft later on in the week once we've um, had the cup games had press conference and stuff because there might be injuries midweek you never know uh sun we've been over salah we've been over smith row we've been over townsend is a player that um i mean he's kind of a give and take at the moment he hasn't really done anything the last couple of game weeks has he now two points two points before that he got 10 points twice he's got wolves away next and then tottenham then city then brent i mean he's really there that you, i mean you can just put him on your bench really i guess like i think smith row would probably be a better option over the next couple of game weeks having leicester and watford then newcastle um so yeah i think they actually intertwine quite nails to be no they don't actually because he's got city and smith row has got everton so you might have to play four at the back that week because in game week 12 i think livermento has norwich he does yeah so you could just play four at the back in that game week and then tony would have been over jimenez i mean he's another thwang but he's just on penalties antonio i mean you could keep him in he did score you've got villa next but then he's got liverpool but then wolves and city i mean if you are uh, back in antonio um then yeah he, he should hopefully score a couple over the next four fixtures finishing things off this is the last wild card draft where the money kind of goes into the upfront um but kind of scattered around everywhere as well uh, a little bit different we still have foster and Rayer in goal but this time we have um trent 
Rudiger and Cancelo at the back instead of Chilwell this time. And that's just because Chilwell isn't like 1000% nailed, whereas Rudiger is. I know a lot of people suffered from not having Azpilicueta, uh, from having Azpilicueta at the weekend, so they didn't get any kind of points from uh, the Chelsea back line. So yeah, that's kind of why Rudiger's in there. And I mean, Rudiger was just bombing forward. Like he had some decent shots on target. This guy's going to score a couple of long shot efforts this season. I really do think so. And you're going to want him for when he does it. Uh, Cancelo's there just to obviously target the City defense. Semedo's there. Um, I mean, he did give away a penalty. I mean, he got so unlucky. He gave away a penalty in the 93rd minute um, against Leeds, which was really, really annoying because I really needed that for my game week to not be an absolute mess. But then they've got Everton, Crystal Palace. The main reason I've got Semedo in this team is for Norwich and Burnley. Like, those are two really, really nice fixtures that you kind of want to target. Um, so, yeah, in my personal opinion, I, I'm probably going to hold Semedo for those, but there might be better options. Like, you could play Dyer um, because Dyer has some really, really nice fixtures coming up on game week 12, which is Leeds, Burnley, Brentford, Norwich. So, that could be a Dyer instead because there's literally just enough money to get this draft. Um, but then in midfield, we have Mount. We've spoken about Foden. We've spoken about Salah. Sissoko is there just for bench fodder. Uh, Kovacic is already also there for bench fodder, but also kind of returning a bit as well. Got 11 points against Norwich. Gets 2, 2, 2, 6, 13. Like, he's getting more assists this season, which is really, really interesting because he's like a CDM. Like, he never pushes forward, but he, he's getting some assists. Up front, we have Huang Antonio still, but we've also got, you just got Kane up front. Uh, again, just to target these fixtures. United, Everton, I don't think are going to be the worst fixtures. As I said, United just got battered. Everton just got battered. And then he's got Leeds, Burnley, Brentford, Norwich. So I think it's the best time of the season to target these two fixtures if you're going to have to play them because they're both just coming off massive five. They've just both conceded five goals but yeah they are all the wild card drafts from me this week i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did drop a like down below leave a comment if you played your wild card or you just got transfers who you're bringing in who you're taking out how did your game week nine go sure it went better than mine uh subscribe if you're brand new and until next time peace